everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, I'm going to be showing you my Letha altar setup. So today is that day again, it's time to change out the Sabbat altar. Now this time I'm switching from the Beltane altar to the Letha altar. Now if you do want to see what my previous altars look like, I do have a playlist that I will link up here for any of you guys that want to work your way through all of my altars and kind of see how they progress through the year. But today we are switching from Beltane to Letha. Now most of this video is a time lapse of me setting up the altar, so I'm going to let you watch that and then I'll get back to you at the end with a little bit of a chit chat about what kind of things are on the altar itself.
So this is the top of the Letha altar and it's a lot plainer than most of my altars usually are and that's because for once I actually wanted to be able to burn something. I don't know what it is about Letha but I always want to get the incense going, I always want to have candles, so I really wanted to do that this month without having to worry about setting fire to anything. So at the very back I do have the same art print that was on my Beltane altar, this is from Redbubble, I'll link it down in the description box. It's not affiliated with me in any way, I just really like the print and I got a lot of comments on it last time so I figured I'd put it down in the description box. Now the print really isn't there for any reason other than it's very pretty but also it adds height to the altar. So this here that you can see this edge is actually a windowsill. Now I like having this altar as tall as possible and this isn't tall enough. <laughs> Not yet anyway. So I have this in the background to help add extra height. In front of that I have one of my large goddess statues. Now if you've been on the website you'll know what these look like. One of these is on almost all of my altars regardless of who it is and what sabbat it is. I always seem to have one of them. This is my gold and green goddess and in her stomach is a clear quartz sphere. Now I didn't really want this altar to have any particular energy. I didn't want it to be positive or negative. I really wanted it to be completely neutral. So I've chosen clear quartz for this because I just really wanted something calm. I think at the moment, life is so crazy with everything that's going on. I wanted something just completely neutral, so I've chosen a clear quartz. Now, I can't really reach the other one because it's over the top of a candle and I don't want to burn myself, but I have a little quartz Venus of Willendorf, little tiny Venus of Willendorf. She's carved into clear quartz. So I have her on one side and then I have a quartz phallus on the other, mainly because I like to bring that aspect of balance into almost all of my altars. Now in front of her I have a candle. Now this candle is going to be transient because I am going to be burning through it as we get closer and closer to the Sabbath. This is actually a cleansing candle. Now currently, with everything that's going on in the world, I'm finding that I'm holding on to a lot of my own personal negativity that I'm really struggling to get rid of. So I have a cleansing candle going. This is actually one that I made for our cleansing mystery box a few months ago. I had one left over and I decided, you know what? I think it's gonna be time to use it. So I've got that going just to kind of help cleanse everything out. I have a lot of spirits in my house that don't really want me to be doing a house cleansing as a traditional sense. So going around the house with a bundle of herbs and smoke cleansing. So instead I'm using a candle to energy cleanse instead because then I don't tick off the ghosts, but also I help get rid of any of that energy that I really don't want lingering around. In front of it, I have an incense burner. This is usually on my Bridget altar, but I have asked her and I've moved it onto this one. And inside is some Bridget incense. Now I know that it's not Bridget's festival, that would be in bulk, but there's something about Letha and it's sunny, fiery energy makes me really want to burn some Bridget incense. So I have some Bridget incense going here, which smells absolutely amazing. And then I don't really have that many crystals. I have a couple of tiger eye stones. And then at the very front here, I have a stone that is really significant to me anyway, and it's significant to this time of the year. So this is a Priscelli blue stone. Now I actually got this from the shop at Stonehenge. It's very expensive that shop is, but it does have a lot of meaning to me. I've been able to go to Stonehenge one or two times and I absolutely love it there. There's a lot of tourists, but it is really, really nice there. And Priscelli Blue Stone is actually the stone that they use to create some of the stones at Stonehenge. So I have this and it's a constant reminder to me of Stonehenge and the energy of the place. But also it's my dream to one day be able to go down to Stonehenge and be able to watch the sun rise on summer solstice and one day I will be able to do it. I haven't been able to do it yet, but one day in my life I will go down and I will actually be there at Stonehenge for the summer solstice. So this is kind of a constant reminder to me of that. Now usually I'd represent Stonehenge in the form of a candle henge like I did a couple of years ago, but this year I figured Priscelli Bluestone is the way to go. So the bottom section of the altar looks kind of random and all over the place and it's mainly because it's a place where everything goes that doesn't really have a home anywhere else on the altar. So over to the far side I have a white colour changing Himalayan salt lamp on top of a wooden disc. 
Now this is always on the altar, mainly because this section of the room is like a black hole. It is so dark, especially at night, so it's really nice having a light in this corner so you can actually reasonably see the altar at some point. I then have, same as always, my Amethyst Aura Heart. Now, this doesn't necessarily have a reason for being on here, other than it is really beautiful, really reflective, and I like having it on display, and so this altar is where it ends up going. Same as always, I have my Antler Wand, I have my Athame, and then I have this beautiful plaque in the middle. I put this on the altar for no reason this time other than it was gold and it really fitted in with the theme, although I am planning on changing it up as the Sabbaths go on this year and putting something else in the middle. I know I've had this in the middle for quite a long time now and I'm definitely going to start changing it out. It's just for this altar, kind of fitted with the gold and everything. And then the last things I actually have are crystals. So I have a few pieces of quartz, I have lots of citrine, I mean, lots of tigerite, I've got a piece of pyrite piece of red jade and I also have a piece of muscovite in the centre and that is literally it for this altar. So that is my Letha altar all finished. Now I will be the first one to say it's not the prettiest, it's not the most well made, it's not the most functional, it's not the nicest altar I've ever done. And that's mainly because I just haven't had the motivation to actually do it. So you know that in a lot of my altar setup videos you actually see me dismantle the previous Sabbath altar. Well I actually dismantled the Beltane altar a week and a bit ago and I just have not had the motivation to actually make up my Letha altar. For reference, I am filming this and setting up the altar on the 17th of June. You are watching this video or this video is going up on the 17th of June and the solstice is in less than a week. Um, so yeah, it's taken me a really long time to get to setting up this altar. Typically I'd have set it up a week, two weeks ago. I have just had no motivation whatsoever. Like everything that's going on in the world, everything that I'm thinking about, it's literally pulling me in like 50 different directions and I just, I just didn't make my altar. So when I did finally get around to doing it, it probably isn't as good as it could have been if I did spend a little bit more time planning it. 
but you kind of get to the point where if you keep planning, you don't do, and then my altar would never have gone up. So it has gone up eventually, very delayed, but it is up and it is functional. And now my house smells absolutely amazing because it smells like Bridget incense, which makes me incredibly happy. So I've got a question for you guys. What is on your Letha altar this year? Have you set one up? Have you not set one up? And has the current situation changed what is on your altar? For me, I would probably have more things from outside, but because I'm not going out very often, I actually don't have anything living on my altar at all this Sabbath. And it's really strange, usually, especially during the summer solstice, I would have something. But no, I have nothing this year, I and mean, it's kind of bizarre, so let me know down in the comment section if you guys don't have anything on your altar that you would usually have, or do you have different things and you've just kind of switched it up? Feel free to let me know. If you do want to look at other people's Sabbath altars, or you want to share your own photographs, there is a Discord server down in the description box that you can join and there's a whole section all about altars where you can chat about them, you can post photos, get inspiration, ideas, all that kind of stuff. The link will be down in the description box. So I want to say thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful. I hope it was reasonably enjoyable. If you did enjoy it, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I do try my best to post magical content every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6 p.m. And if you do enjoy watching the live streams and you would like to catch the next live stream while it's well, live, the next live stream is going ahead on Saturday. So Saturday at 6 p.m. GMT is when the next live stream is gonna go ahead. If you want updates, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I do update on there. The link is down in the description box or you can follow the community tab of the YouTube channel and I do post on there when the next live stream is going to be. So be ready, have your questions ready to go and I will see you in the next video. So stay safe everyone, make sure you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video.